Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Carolyn Birchall and welcome to Service Please. This is the show where we highlight the importance of service as we believe that good service makes good business. In this episode, we're going to talk about the 10 must-have skills to deliver memorable customer service. Joining me is Catherine DeVry, former Executive Australian Women of the Year, twice named Australian Keynote Speaker of the Year, who has spoken on five continents on service, change and resilience. Catherine has also published eight ravingly successful books, translated into dozens of languages, three specifically on the topic of customer service. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you for joining me today. Great to be back, Carolyn. And what we wanted to talk about today is the you know, top 10 must-haves that people can do to help them with their customer service. So I'm going to kick off with the first one about the importance of being a good listener. Um, why, why do you feel that's important? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's absolutely critical to be a good listener to services, whether you get complaints or whether you get feedback or whether you're just trying to do new product development. And it's really important to listen not just to the needs but also to the wants of your customers mm. as well. I remember when I worked for IBM many years ago, we, Mitsui Bank was one of our largest customers. Okay. And they came to us and said they wanted the number five on the Kanji keypad to be raised because they believed that would improve teller productivity. Just like on your landline, this bumpy number five. We took them to our labs. We proved conclusively that a raised number five would make no difference to teller productivity. They said, hmm, you're right. We don't need it, but we want it. So who did they buy their computers from? Not us, because we weren't listening. Yes. Not just to their needs, but to their wants. Yes. And I think that that's really important, because sometimes customers might not need a certain feature, but they might want it. Wow. But also, sometimes they might want less than the whole shebang that you're selling. Yes. And if you can make it not upselling, but right selling yes. for them as well, to really listen to what their needs and their wants are. Yes. There was um, a membership um, site that was in touch with me recently asking my opinion on their offering. And so I did. I went through it and said, you know, it's really quite interesting because, you know, you, you want to sell members this, myself included, trying to target me. And it was like, you know, $10,000 a year or something like that. And I said, but the thing is, is that out of this list of 15 things that you're offering, I really only want and or need these five things, you know. So my recommendation is what if you tailored it? What if you allow sure. people to tailor their membership to what they specifically want where they think that it's going to help them? And I've yet to see someone on a membership type program to actually do that because they're like, no, we know they didn't what you listen to you. That's right. We know what you want. You want this, 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 this. And it's like, actually, no. No. And so then, you know, I, I won't sign up because it's like, well, you haven't really listened no. and uh, you're offering me so many things that I already know up front that I'll never use. And sometimes for reasons like compliance or safety, mm. you can't give the customer what they might True. feel that they want. And it's a matter of life. But generally speaking, to be you know a bit more flexible. Like you know, in the old days, Henry Ford, you can have any color of car you want as long as it's black. That. Yes. And now, like it used to be computers were just beige or gray. Yes. You know, so but it's it's looking at different things and finding the, the needs and the wants. Wants, yeah. That's a great distinction. And talking about needs, how do we identify and anticipate the needs? You know, how can we better anticipate customers' needs? Well, we never can anticipate 100%, mm -hmm. but I think the number one simple thing to do is to put yourself in the customer's shoes. Mm -hmm. And let me give you an example. Many years ago, I was speaking at a conference in Perth, and I mm -hmm. arrived with no voice, which is a, an occupational hazard yes. for a professional speaker. And the receptionist went through her standard checklist. I think it's great to have scripts and standard yes. checklists. This is the pool, and this is the golf club. I'm like, I'm just saying, I just want to go to bed. Anyway, about 10 minutes later, there's a knock on my door. Room service. I went, I didn't know I did room service. And the voice on the other side of the door said, yes, Mr. Vry, we know you didn't order room service, but we also know you're not feeling well. We've got some hot lemon and honey with our compliments. And sure enough, on a tray was some hot lemon and honey and a vitamin C tablet. 
What's more, there was a handwritten note from the chef that said, if you'd like anything special for dinner that's not on the menu, like chicken soup, we'd be happy to do that for wow. you. Wow, exactly. There was another handwritten note from the concierge, because this hotel was out of town. Would you like us to go into town and get you drugs? Legal sort, that yes. is. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, it was just fantastic, because that receptionist really acted as a champion member of the team. And she put herself in my shoes, how mm. she would feel mm. if she was sick and a long way from home. So the next morning, I called her into the conference with my voice marginally <laughs> restored. And I, you know, I gave her some recognition. She said, shucks, I was just you know, putting myself in your shoes. Now, wasn't that a great example of anticipating Absolutely. customers' needs and wants? Yes. And I think it's a matter of great services combining the head and heart mm -hmm. and the hand in terms of taking action. So I subsequently wrote a book called Hot Lemon and Honey. And it's not a plug for the book because the royalties go to the Himalayan Trust. But just like Hot Lemon and Honey soothes your throat, Hot Lemon and Honey service will sue the customer. Mm. Wow, that's an amazing example. And just even her response to go like, well, shucks, I, you know, I just put myself in your shoes. Yeah. And so what would I want if I was in that But scenario? isn't that it? Like, you know, and you think sometimes we overcomplicate service these yes. days, I think, in this day and age. And I think when I was a little girl, my mom used to say, you know, Catherine, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah, you had the same parents. <laughs> yes, yes. Mine's but you know, same. it's it's really it's that's what she was doing, and yes. that was a real anticipation of needs. That wasn't the having the surveys and this and the data and the matrixes and all yes. that. Which I'm not saying those aren't good, but at a point in time, it's very simple. Yes, you know? keep put it your, simple. Put yourself in the other person's shoes and maybe go that extra mile. Mm. And the next one, the next point is about, and I think this is really important to differentiate ourselves, is making customers feel important and appreciated. You know, do you have some top tips on you know, well, how people can do that? One of the things that really annoys me about banks and telcos um, mm -hmm. is they have all these offers for new customers. Yes. And when they sometimes just totally forget the other customer. Now, That's I true. used to be in sales for many years at IBM. And when I was in sales, we were taught how to close a sale. Close mm -hmm. a sale. I'm not saying that closing a sale isn't important, but these days, closing a sale isn't as important as opening a relationship mm. and opening that long-term relationship with your customers because the research shows it costs five times more to go out and get a new customer mm. than to keep an existing. But how mm. often do organizations take for granted their existing customers? And I call this what a, the wombat theory. Okay. And to me, wombat stands for word of mouth best advertising technique. Wow, okay. Because companies definition. can spend a fortune on advertising and mm -hmm. getting new customers in, but if two people are speaking to each other at football or at yes. coffee or at the school, what do you remember? The glossy advertising or the word of mouth? Yes. These days it's word of mouth. Yes. Best yes. advertising True. technique. And I think it's really, really important that people, you know, really build on those relationships mm. and don't just go for the quick sale, which is a temptation to do when you're starting out a business in your the early days. And I think particularly um, too with so many businesses moving online, particularly in the you know what traditionally would have been retail, is that it's very easy for people to switch from one to yes. the other. So if you don't um, build up those relationships even with your online customers, then they'll just move on to something that's but even shiner simple and things. I just got something in my inbox the other day. Um, you know, here's a, a $10 voucher for something because you've spent X amount of money with yes. us. Or, and on my birthday, there's a couple of online companies that send me a voucher for my birthday. So they send me a $10 voucher. I go online and buy something worth $100. Yes. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting thing. But it's like, oh, and I know that they're not really thinking of me, but, you know, they don't know it's my birthday. It's all automated. But mm. the thing is, it's just, and I, if it becomes too much, you know, it mm. gets over the top, but it's just like, oh, that's just a nice little unexpected thing of appreciation. Absolutely. And there's um, one online retailer that I've uh, started using and they've offered this service because, you know, one of the challenges is when you're buying clothes and things online is mm. do they actually fit? Do exactly. they not fit? And then the hassle of having to return something and, and that type of thing. And what they do is they allow you to... to um, 
hold uh, up to a thousand dollars worth of clothes and they will send it to you but they'll also send it to you with a return envelope with the postage oh, paid and, and that really? type of thing and you've got 30 days to decide wow. so then you can receive those goods try them on see if they like and send them back wow. for free what you don't and then you're only paying for what you actually take so it's like bringing the retail experience into your home which is just Fantastic! And you that, must you tell know, me who they are offline. I will tell you because <laughs> I've never bought clothes. The only thing I bought online once was shoes, and they didn't fit, and I couldn't return them, and it was just a waste of money. So I've never bought anything online since yes. clothing wise. So it's fantastic wow. like that, right? And so it's those little things. And going back to our previous points, like wow, you know, well, it keeps people engaged, and it's looking after mm. your existing customers sure. by offering that little that's extra great. service. Um, Another one is, and, and it can be a little challenging now because so many things are online, but reading body language. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts around that? And to continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.